In today's video, I wanna discuss losing belly fat, taking your lower abdomen, taking that last bit of fat that you have, going from looking like this to getting to a place like this and how protein supplementation is gonna make that happen. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and thank you for the great questions. We're gonna get right into today's question right here on Instagram. I'm gonna talk about belly fat. I'm gonna talk about going from in shape to ridiculously in shape, getting that 15%, 12% look. And I'm gonna talk about protein supplementation. I'm gonna talk about some research. I'm gonna explain exactly some things you can apply right now. And if you wait to the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you three things that I do every day that help me get and stay shredded. I've lost 41 pounds this year. 25 pounds since July. My goal is to get rid of belly fat and get to 15%. My question, should I be eating or having a shake prior to working out, followed up with a protein shake after the workout, or is it better to work out in a fasted state before I eat anything that day? I've made decent progress, but I want to shred the belly fat. Thanks for your help. Guys, common question I get all the time is about the belly fat, but this one's got a little added twist to it because it talks about protein supplementation. And Lately, I've been getting a lot of questions about protein shakes. The idea that a protein shake, a protein shake, somehow that has a different effect than if you just ate protein, right? So let's talk about what protein is, just the basics. Protein is the building blocks of our muscle cells. So it helps us keep and build muscle. But it's not only the building blocks of our muscle cells, it's the building blocks of all the cells in our body, okay? There is total cell regeneration that requires protein to happen. We tend to focus because we're meatheads on breaking down the muscle, building it back so it gets bigger, right? I've been training my biceps for 30 years. I've added about mm, three centimeters. But the point is, is that when you build it, you break it down, right? So when you're training in the gym, those muscles are getting tore up. You ingest the food, your body builds those muscles back stronger. And over time, you're adding micrograms, micrograms of muscle I'd love to tell you you're gonna add pounds of muscle every week, not happening. But consistency and eating well are gonna allow that to happen. So how does this relate to body fat? I think the biggest mistake a lot of people make when they go into a fat loss phase, and I didn't get that detail here from you, but they go into a very aggressive fat loss phase where they may not be eating enough protein to do a few things. One, just to help with normal bodily functions. And over time, you're gonna to start to have some issues. One of those could be the loss of lean body mass. This is very dangerous, especially in our aging populations. Sarcopenia or the loss of muscle as we age is one of the leading causes of just loss of quality of life. So you don't wanna be losing muscle, you wanna be losing fat, okay? So what is a protein shake exactly? It is just a supplement for your daily protein intake. Why is it valuable? Hell, I keep packets of protein in my house because if I'm in a hurry, I can tear them, chuck them in my shaker, drink them and go. Does that mean protein shakes are magic? No, that just means I didn't have time to sit my ass down, cook a meal and eat some chicken, eat some eggs, eat some steak, whatever protein source you wanna get. To me, protein powder is just a process of getting your protein in that makes your life easier. There's nothing magic about a protein shake. And I keep hearing that term, when should I have my protein shake? You could be very successful with fat loss having zero protein shakes. You could also be very successful with fat loss having just protein shakes, okay? The value is that it helps you get your protein easily. And I think for a lot of us, meal prep and having enough protein throughout the day are very difficult. Why? Protein requires preparation and storage. Almost all forms of protein have to be cooked, prepared, and stored. And you have to cook protein properly. However, if you just have an easy source that can help you bump your numbers up by 40, 80 grams per day, that's gonna put you in a place where you are able to add muscle. You're going to trigger muscle protein synthesis. So what is this anabolic window before and after? Well, I'm gonna post a study right here where they did show that it is a benefit to having proper pre and post-workout protein supplementation. However, that is secondary to your daily total numbers of calories and proteins. So let me explain what that means. That means if you just have a 40 gram protein shake before and after your workout, and you only get 80 grams of protein for the day versus somebody else who gets 200 grams of protein, but doesn't even get it anywhere near their workouts. The person that is having that 200 grams of protein is gonna get a better response to their training. They're gonna have better recovery. They're gonna build more muscle. And thus it's gonna allow them to lose more body fat and be healthy through the process. So what's the best way to handle it? Listen, if you wanna train fasted and get up at five in the morning, I have plenty of clients that do this and I have no problems with it. Do what works best for your lifestyle. 
If I had to have my way about it, I would wanna make sure you have something prior to training if you're gonna train with a lot of intensity. You want the quality of the workout not to suffer. If you're just going into workout to do some cardio to burn some calories and you wanna do that fasted, hey, I'm all for it. You gotta remember, my mindset is I'm always trying to be anabolic. Anabolic is the idea that we were adding tissue versus catabolic, which is the idea that we're losing tissue. Now, the difficulty becomes when you're trying to get to 15% body fat because you have to be catabolic to do that. However, research shows, and honestly, my history of coaching shows that you can lose body fat without losing and even gaining muscle if you hit your daily protein goals. How much protein should you be hitting on a daily basis? Talk about it all the time. Hit your goal weight. If you're 200 pounds and you're not happy with where you're at and you think, I want to be 150, 150 is going to be plenty of protein for you. If you have no idea where to start and you want to know how much protein you should be eating, how much carbs, how much fats to reach your goals, I've got a free calculator on my website, guys. It doesn't cost anything. You just go there and get some information. It can help you build muscle, lose fat, lose fat rapidly. I'm also going to be doing a transformation challenge right in the new year. We're giving away $25,000 right now. We are picking out our winners from this most recent summer sculpt. Very exciting. I'm going to share that with you guys, do some interviews. But the point is, what matters most when it comes to losing body fat? A caloric deficit, not how you time your protein shakes, okay? The next most important thing is your daily total calories of protein, carbs, and fats to make sure that you are healthy enough to lose fat, keep muscle, and keep the progress going. The third most important thing I would say is meal timing. They can all act together, okay? So the timing of your meals can impact your daily totals because if you eat at a certain time, you might be hungrier. Whereas if you eat at other times, you might be less hungry. As an example, I get up every day and I do cardio for 30 minutes to an hour, just depending on my goals. And I do that completely fasted. I've tried having something before that. And I find that I am absolutely ravenously hungry for whatever reason, if I eat before my 5.30 AM cardio. Does that mean fasted cardio is somehow magic? No, it comes down to how many calories you burn throughout the day, how many calories you take in throughout the day, okay? Whether or not you're fasted, how you time those meals is very, very secondary and it comes very much down to your preferences. Hopefully this answered your question. Guys, keep sending them because we're gonna do another one of these tomorrow and I really wanna help you.